List view. Let's kick things off by creating a simple list. In our code, we have this line which generates a list of 20 items, each labeled item 0, item 1, and so on. This is the foundation of our list view, providing the data to be displayed. Here we have the basics implementation of a list view using the list view builder. It is fantastic for creating scrollable lists efficiently. The item count specifies the number of items, and the item builder function defines the appearance of each item. List style and interactive items. Now, let's talk about list styles. We are using list style to structure and display our list items. These interactive tiles allow users to tap on items, triggering actions. In our case, we are displaying a snack bar when an item is tapped. For that, we have created this snack bar method, which allows us to display the index of the tapped item or provide a detailed information about the selected item in the list. Here you can display or navigate to take action based on your app specific requirements. In this section, where we used list tiles, you have the flexibility to replace them with your own widgets based on your specific app UI requirements. Different list view types. List view dot separated is a variant of list view dot builder that allows you to specify custom separators between items. This separator builder property is used to define a widget. For example, here we used the divider to separate each item in the list. In list view builder, you have control over the item builder, but not the separators. List view dot separated provides a convenient way to customize the appearance of separators between items and use list view separated when you want to display a list with distinct separators between each item. Scroll physics and behavior. Our list view comes with default scroll physics, providing a smooth scrolling experience. And you can customize this based on your app requirements. Here we use the bouncing scroll physics as an example of customized scroll physics. Flutter offers various predefined scroll physics classes, such as clamping scroll physics and bouncing scroll physics. Or you can create a custom physics for more specific needs. Pull to refresh. Next up, we have implemented pull to refresh using the refresh indicator with the refresh list function. A cool feature to update your list with, with the new data effortlessly. The refresh indicator widget in Flutter offers a visual indication to users when the pull down to the refresh content. It is typically wrapped around the existing list view builder widget. The on refresh property is assigned to the refresh list function which defines the action to be performed when the user initiates a pull to refresh gesture. Next up, we have got the feature builder. First, let's create this fetch data function, a function that uses feature.delayed to simulate a network request delay of two seconds. Then, it returns a greeting message just to simulate an asynchronous data fetching. Now, let's focus on the feature builder itself. The feature builder takes a feature parameter which is the asynchronous operation to await. In this case, fetch data. Inside the builder function, we have a switch case to handle different state of the future. Connection state dot none. This state indicate that no feature has been provided. In this case, we display a message prompting the user to start the operation. And let's add this floating action button that triggers a rebuild of a feature builder when it is pressed, simulating a data refresh. In a real app, the future builder would be triggered by the user's action. A next state is waiting. Connection state dot wait. The state indicate that the future is in progress. Here, we display a loading indicator to let the user know that something is happening. And then the next or the other state is done. Connection state dot done. This state indicate that the future has completed. If there is an error, we display the error message. Otherwise, we display the fetched data. So, when to use it or when to use Feature Builder? Bring in Feature Builder when dealing with asynchronous tasks, especially when fetching data from the internet. It elegantly manages the loading, error, and success state. Animated Builder is a general purpose widget for building animations. It is useful for more complex widgets that wish to include an animation as part of a larger build function. To use animated builder, construct the widget and pass it a builder function. To use animated builder, there are two required named arguments you have to pass. 
The first one is an animation whose type is listenable. To provide the value, we can pass an instance of animation class, which extends listenable. The constructor of animation controller requires you to pass a named argument, this one, whose type is ticker provider. To obtain ticker provider, you can add with ticker provider state mixer on your state class. You can use this keyword to obtain the ticker provider. The animation duration in this code is set to 5 seconds, which means a full animation needs 5 seconds to complete. The created animation must be triggered to be run, for example by using forward, reverse or repeat. Another thing you need to do is override the dispose method so that you can dispose the controller. The other required named argument is builder. The value you need to pass is a function with two parameters. Every time the controller changes the value, Flutter calls the builder function. The widget defined as child of the animated builder will be passed as the second argument. The function needs to run a widget. For example, you can use transform to apply transformation to the child based on the current value of the controller. Because the builder function is called at every animation thing. It can be inefficient if the builder returns a subtree that doesn't depend on the animation. For that case, Flutter recommends us to pre-build the subtree by passing it as the child argument which will be passed to the builder function. Next up, we have the grid view widget, a powerful tool that allows you to organize your content into structured grids. Now, let's talk about some key properties and parameters of the grid view. Inside the grid view builder, we specify the item count, which determines the number of items in our grid. In the grid delicate, where we define the layout of our grid. Here is a visual representation of what our grid might look like, with different configuration of the grid delicate. In this context, we have the ability to manipulate various parameters. For instance, we can control the number of columns. Here we have set it to 2. The spacing between items, which is currently set to 10, and more. All you need to do is define the cross axis count and main axis count, as shown in this code. Next up, let's see how we can customize individual grid tiles. Within the item builder function, we can define custom widgets for each grid item. In this example, we are creating a gesture detector for handling tap events on the grid items. When we tap on an item, we get a simple feedback, in this case just printing a message to the console. But you can imagine the possibilities here for navigation, animation and much more. And here the grid tile widget is used to represent each item in the grid, providing features like headers, footers and other decorations. Now let's discuss scrolling and performance optimization, crucial topics when working with larger datasets. Here in this code snippet, we have a grid view builder, implementation with 20 items. But here is the catch. Instead of loading all the data up front, we are simulating lazy loading using the asynchronous data fetching. Within the item builder function, each grid item is wrapped in a feature builder. When a grid item is about to be displayed, it triggers an asynchronous call to fetch the data. Until the data is fetched, a placeholder is shown to the user. As we run the app, you will notice these placeholders being displayed while the data is being fetched in the background. This approach ensures a smoother user experience, especially when dealing with a larger data set. Once the data is loaded, the future builder updates its UI with the actual content. In our example, the fetch data function is a placeholder for any asynchronous operation such as fetching data from an API or reading from a database. This flexibility enables us to seamlessly integrate lazy loading into various parts of our app. Page View In Flutter development, a page view offers a straightforward method for swiping through pages. It supports both horizontal and vertical scrolling. It is commonly used to implement features such as onboarding screens image galleries and slideshows. Let's start by declaring these two variables. The first one is the controller. The page controller is a class provided by Flutter that allows us to control the page view. We can use this controller to programmatically change the displayed page. 
jump to a specific page and much more. And the second one is the index of the page. Then let's create a list of widgets separately, which we will later pass it into the page view. This allows us to manage the page more efficiently. Then let's create the page view, which takes the controller and the child, where we pass the list of widgets, which we have created earlier. Next, let's use the builder, which requires receiving an item builder. Function that must return a widget and an item count property. If we set item count to five, like this, the builder will create five items. When you don't set an item count with any integer number, the builder will create many items recurrently. Page view controller. The page view controller receives three arguments. Initial page, viewport fraction, and key page. For example, you can define a page view controller like this. Initial page. If you want to show a different screen as the first screen of your application, you can set initial page to the exact number you want. For example, let's set it to 2. When we rebuild the application, on the first screen, you will see the one located at the index 2 because we already have set the initial page to 2. If you set a page index that is not available, page view will automatically show you the last available page. Viewport fraction. By default, viewport fraction is set to 1.0 which means that the entire page will be displayed on the screen. If you set it to let's say 0.8, it will show only a portion of the first and the second page. There you have it, the top five Flutter widgets that will add flair and functionality to your app. Dive into the world of widgets, choose the right ones for your scenarios and watch your Flutter app come to life. Looking to take your skills to the next level, head over to heyflutter.com and apply now for our exclusive 12-week Flutter program. Transform yourself into a Flutter master and lead the way in app development. Visit heyflutter.com for more details and secure your spot in the program. Thanks for exploring the Flutter widget.